The airbrush is generally accepted to be one of the most useful painting tools on a modeler's workbench. It occurred to me that the biggest difference between a good looking model and a show winner is generally the finish. The biggest obstacle that most modelers face is a lack of confidence in their painting and airbrushing skills. Having been there, it's my opinion that this stems from having problems airbrushing on a regular basis, which, more often than not, is caused by improper cleaning of the airbrush. I have spent years figuring this out and getting comfortable with my airbrush, and since then I haven't had a single issue that I could not overcome by simply cleaning the airbrush and starting over laying the paint down. A bad batch of paint is actually very, very rare. If you're comfortable with the operation of your airbrush, you can almost always manage a nice even finish regardless of the paint being too thin or too thick. This video will focus on how I clean a traditional gravity fed dual action airbrush. So without further ado, why don't we go to the video. Iwata Airbrush Company supplied me with an HPB Plus Dual Action Internal Mix Airbrush for this segment when I wanted something other than my old Badger Crescendo. This is a gorgeous piece of equipment, making minute detail adjustments a cinch. We all do this differently, but here's what I have always used and it works for me. I use an old teaspoon, a hobby knife handle holds it level, and an old screwdriver is used for mixing paint in the bottle with thinner. I pour the paint directly from the bottle into the spoon and then add the appropriate amount of thinner. I usually have about half the teaspoon filled. This allows room for mixing and checking the consistency of the paint and is rarely not enough. After mixing the paint in the spoon, I place a few drops of the appropriate thinner into the airbrush and spray onto a piece of cardboard. This is crucial because it allows me to ensure the airbrush is working and spraying properly before pouring the paint in and having to discard it all in order to clean a gummy airbrush. I use the spoon to transfer the paint directly to the paint cup. I like to have a few choices up to and including lacquer. A white squirt bottle is filled with alcohol. Generally, I work from harshest appropriate thinner for the paint I've sprayed all the way down to water. You'll be relieved to know that this won't require a large investment on your part. Glass jar. When I'm done with the color, I pour the remaining paint into a jar. I've been using the same jar for years. Rag. Used for wiping down the airbrush. Pipe cleaner. Don't be cheap with them, as the cheaper ones you might buy could leave fibers in the brush. Cotton swabs. Same as the pipe cleaners. Spend the extra money and get the ones where the fibers do not come off. Dedicated paintbrush. It doesn't need to be stiff bristled. Straw. I actually use this to transfer my thinner to both the mixing spoon and the paint cup for cleaning. I stick it about an inch into the thinner, cap the top with a finger, and then transfer it. You can use whatever method works for you. I just find this cheap and easy. You can also use a pipette. They may cost a little bit more, but you can actually know what you are getting with the amount that you want to transfer as it is a transparent plastic. Also, some pipettes will have guides on them so you know that you can transfer the same amount each time. Airbrush cleaning station. Just buy one. You'll have it forever and they're not that expensive. Your health is worth far more. Generally speaking, I rarely do a complete breakdown in cleaning of my airbrush. The more you use a system like I do, the more comfortable you'll be with knowing when you need to pull the whole thing apart and give it a good cleaning. 
a complete breakdown and cleaning will take under five minutes. A quick cleaning takes less than two. I use a quick cleaning method when changing colors and at the end of a painting session when using a clear coat over those colors, I find these tend to really gum up an airbrush. So in my opinion, it's best advice to just break the airbrush down and let the parts soak. Pour the remaining paint into your glass jar. I always end up with a drop of paint running down the side of my paint cup, so have a rag or a cotton swab handy to wipe this off. Use a cotton swab to swab as much of the paint out of the inside of the cup as you can. Leaving the paint in there just means the first run of thinner you run through will essentially just be thinned paint. Fill the cup a third of the way up with thinner. Use the other end of the cotton swab to wipe down the inside of the paint cup again. This will mix the paint with the clean thinner. You'll end up with a lightly tinted thinner. Spray this entire mixture into your airbrush cleaner and use whatever max pressure you'd normally use for spraying and move the needle trigger from all the way forward to back repeatedly. This cleans the tip of the needle off. Once the paint cup is empty, take a clean cotton swab and wipe down the inside of the cup. The swab should come out damp, but generally colorless. Spray from the airbrush and wipe the inside of the paint cup until both are free of any color. At this point, use one paint cup of water to clean the thinner out and you're done, ready for a color change or to be put away for the next session. Internal mix airbrushes are the type most commonly used and can be identified by the fact that they have a needle running through the length of the airbrush body. This needle controls the size and the amount of paint sprayed. As the needle is drawn back and away from the tip, or commonly known as the head assembly, of the airbrush, paint is mixed with air, or atomized, and then released. The further back the needle is drawn, the more paint is allowed to exit. The airbrush needs to be cleaned only in the areas which come in contact with paint, and the paint flows from the paint reservoir into the airbrush, around the tip of the needle and out through the head assembly. These areas must be kept clean for optimum performance of the airbrush. Between color changes, you could stop there with the cleaning and then continue to paint. However, periodically and at the end of the day, you will want to clean the needle that runs through the airbrush. It's not as bad or as labor intensive as you might think and the more often you do it, the easier it becomes. You'll never have a problem with your airbrush that you can't diagnose and remedy yourself. Airbrushes are built so you can take them apart for cleaning. So don't be nervous. In fact, go take your airbrush apart right now. Investigate how it all goes together and take a look at how the paint is actually drawn out of the paint cup. The more you understand your airbrush, the easier it will be to pinpoint the exact problem when one arises. I generally perform this routine cleaning after spraying a clear coat upon completing a build or whenever my airbrush is in spraying as well or consistently as usual. If you're in the middle of painting, pour the paint into the glass jar and get ready to clean. I know it's annoying, but the paint is far cheaper than putting a whole model aside to never be finished after messing up on the paintwork. Empty paint into jar. Using a cotton swab, Swab as much of the paint out of the inside of the paint cup as you can. Leaving the paint in there just means that the first round of thinner you run through will essentially just be thinned paint. Fill the paint cup a third of the way up with thinner. Use the other end of a cotton swab to wipe down the inside of the paint cup again. This will mix the paint with the clean thinner. You'll end up with a lightly tinted thinner. Spray this entire mixture into your airbrush cleaner. Use whatever max pressure you'd normally use for spraying and move the needle trigger from all the way forward to back repeatedly. This cleans the tip of the needle off. Disassemble the airbrush. 
for my Iwata HPB Plus, this means I take the handle off, back the friction nut off, and pull the needle out. Then I turn my attention to the nose, unscrewing all the individual components. Be cautious of the nozzle that the needle stops in. This part, by its very nature, is tiny and very delicate. This is also the only part which tends to fail mechanically, requiring replacement to get the brush sprained properly again. You'll know this to be the case if a proper cleaning doesn't resolve your issue. Now, with everything apart, use the strongest thinner to clean the airbrush. I always pay attention to what type of paint I used and using the recommended thinner for that paint. I start with a cotton swab and I swipe it along the needle. It may look clean, but you'll be surprised. Then I use a paintbrush, also dipped in the appropriate thinner to clean the bottom of the paint cup. This area is normally hard to clean because the needle sits through it. Use the bristles of the brush to get into the passageway in the body just in front of the paint cup. You'll add this step to your quick cleaning every now and again too. Use a pipe cleaner to gently clean the various parts of the nozzle. If the nozzle is too wide on the inside to get cleaned properly, then double the pipe cleaner over on itself. If you decide to take a break, take all the parts of the nozzle and leave them in a glass jar filled with the appropriate thinner to soak them until you return. Reassemble the airbrush, making sure you use the appropriate lube if the manufacturer indicates you're supposed to. Spray thinner through the airbrush. It should spray perfectly at this point. If it doesn't, then you'll know you're looking at some sort of mechanical failure, generally in the nozzle of the airbrush or a bent needle and not an airbrush that's simply gummed up. I hope you have found this segment helpful and useful. I wish I had figured this out years ago. Now that I'm completely comfortable with disassembling and rebuilding my airbrush, I haven't had a single issue I couldn't fix on my own. The lack of frustration has allowed me to tackle projects I never would have risked before, like my first natural metal finish and all sorts of weathering techniques that I wasn't brave enough to face beforehand.